Hi everyone, it's Janine here with a video celebrating my milestone birthday. Thank you so much for joining in and sharing in the celebration. For this particular video, use the props that you generally use. Let's get started. Welcome to Act 1, where we get things started, setting things off in the direction to which we're going. If it was a movie, it would be the drama, a comedy, a dramedy, action-packed, quiet. You choose. So let's close our eyes, setting our intentions for this practice and for the series. Join your hands together, connect your thumbs with your heart. From your heart center, stating your intentions for your practice. Gently release your hands back down to your thighs, allow your eyes to gently open. Let's start moving by warming the spine. This is something that I would do in my personal practice so you get to it's like an insight into what I would do if I'm just crafting something for me so lie on your belly and there's a modified cobra pose bhujangasana so you're going to join your legs together so we're literally not going to be able to move very far we're stabilizing the pelvis here so you're only going to be able to lift up to your low ribs and that's Correct. So going in slow. Inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. So as you're doing that, legs squeezing together, you're separating the energy from the tailbone down to the feet, crown of the head up. And you let your head follow your heart. And inhale. So you're not looking down once your heart lifts up, you're letting the head. Move with the heart. So you don't want to lead with the head, but you don't also you don't want to drop your head down. And just feel the spine getting warm. Chest open and you're breathing. Let your inhale lift and your exhale lower. Now take your feet, hip bone width apart. And since this is the first, if this is especially the first thing you've done today, you're not going to be able to go as far as you're used to. Hands across from chest, not shoulders. That's going to, unless you're super tight, you're not going to go far anyway. Elbows in towards the body. Press down through all ten toenails. Cubic bone into the floor and inhale, rise. And exhale lower. Inhale and exhale. So moving with the breath still. And you're lengthening up out of the back. So you're not just curving the low back and nothing else. You might find that you can move a little more or not. You're listening to your own body today.
Hands underneath forehead, take a big deep breath in and out. Let's come up to hands and knees for more spinal warming. Place, spread your fingers, wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath hip bones, cat and cow, very particularly moving the spine. Tilt the top rim of the pelvis forward, extend the spine. Lift your heart, let your head follow your heart. Inhale, exhale, low belly pulls in. Rotating the pelvis, lifting the mid back, the upper back. And then inhale, extend, exhale, round. Inhale into that cow. And you extend a little more through the crown of the head and the tail. And as you exhale and round, can you lift a little more through the belly, through the mid back? And then inhale, come back to neutral. Tuck your toes, lift your knees off of the ground. Up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. You can move your feet around. You don't want to move your hands around. They're holding all the, most of the weight. And then get yourself situated, bending the knees, lifting the sitting bones, and then keeping that, not being worried about the heels, drawing down. Focused first on neutral spine. Firm your right leg, inhale, lift it in the air. Hold here. So you can look at your big toe and make sure it's pointed straight down to the floor. Here, purposely not externally rotating the hips. As you lift the right heel up, reach the left heel down. And then exhale, right knee into chest. Pull the low belly in strongly. Hold here. Feel your abdominals working. And then exhale, set your right leg down. Take your left knee down. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Stretch. Let's have the right hand grab the left wrist, inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, Parsva Anjaneyasana, lean up and over to the right. Inhale, come back up to center, so stretching the side body, hands down to the floor, left hand down, reach the right arm up. Look down through the left hand, up through the right. Get long, broad through the shoulder. Exhale, set the right hand down. Step the right leg back to meet the left. Down dog. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Line yourself up. So. Make sure that you're set up properly. If not, you just lower your knees, reset your hands, and then without moving anything, down dog. Firm your left leg, inhale, lift it in the air. Hold. Feel the strength it takes for this three-legged dog. Can you lift the left leg more? Use your glutes. Exhale, left knee, chest, hold. Look to where you're going here. Right between the hands, that's where your foot's going to go. Step it. Right knee down. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. On this side, for fun, take your arms out to the sides, bending at the elbows. Imagine you're trying to pull yourself up, doing a pull-up. 
So you feel the lats work, feel the shoulder blades come more firmly onto the back. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Left hand grabs right wrist, lean up and over left. Inhale, come up. Exhale, right hand down, left arm up to the sky. Exhale, left hand comes down, downward facing dog again. So we've gotten our spine to start to warm up. Just start it into the side body a little. Let's do a little more with the side body. So step your right foot right between your hands. Turn your left foot flat. Parsvakanasana, side angle. So you have options. Right hand on the floor, so the outside of the right foot, to create space for the shoulder. Or hand to the thigh, whatever you want. Left arm starts up to the sky. And now reach it up and over. To the left, oh, across the left ear. That's what I meant to say. And now use your legs. So your legs are going to help you open up in your upper body. And you're going to bring those feet and shins in towards each other. Wind the inner thighs, the knees apart from each other. Low belly lifts, tailbone down, and reach up through the crown of your head. Stretch out through the arms a little more. And then inhale, left arm up. Exhale, set it down. Let's go to the other side like that. So right foot, come back to meet the left. Left foot comes right between the hands. Turn the right foot flat. Right hand comes to the outside. You could put a block underneath here or you're on the thigh, but you're keeping that left shoulder back, right arm up to the sky to start. Right arm across the right ear. Use your legs. Imagine that your legs are trying to get back to Tadasana, that mountain pose, feet are trying to get back underneath the hips. And the inner thighs are widening back behind you and apart. And you're supporting that action with strong abdominals. Pelvic floor lifts, tailbone lengthens all the way up through the crown of the head. Inhale, right arm up, exhale. Right hand down, downward facing dog. Step it back. Come down onto your knees. Bring your big toes together, knees wide, child's pose. This is here as a reminder. Anytime you need to, you come back to this asana and join us when you're ready. Arms stretched out in front of you. Hips reaching down and back. Take your hands underneath your shoulders and use your abdominals as much as you can to lift yourself up. And let's come to standing in Tadasana. Standing at the front of your mat. Find the steadiness here, the strong legs, empowered, supporting you. Pelvic floor lifted, lift up through both sides of your waistline. 
gazing straight ahead. Let's take a white dance for Trikonasana. So if you know, oh, wait a minute, that's the one I grab a block for, go grab your block now. You're going to place it behind your right foot. So I can demonstrate in case you need to so know. Stretch out your arms. Oh, how wide should my feet be? Look at your wrist crease and draw a straight line from that to your ankle. If you have long legs, I'm sorry. Yeah. Lift the ball of your left foot up, turn it in slightly, and lift the ball of your right foot and turn it out 90 degrees. And then before you even go deeper, make sure that you have strong legs to help you. This is your support. If you don't, you'll just collapse down into your hips and will feel awful. So your feet and shins are drawing into the midline. You're pushing your knees apart. They're also going back behind you, so you're not rounding out your low back. You're also not arching it, but lift up from the hip bones all the way to the armpits, get long. Exhale, right hand down, left arm up. So you can have your hand on a block or not. So you're bringing your hand behind the foot so you have room to bring both shoulders back, shoulder blades on your back here. You're feeling your strong hips energetically moving towards each other to support that lengthening of your torso, especially right underneath your right ribs. Yeah, we're hanging out here. Holding it just a little longer every time. Really push down through the ball of the right big toe. That will really help. And then turn the belly and the heart open. Gaze can be up. If that doesn't feel good, gaze can be out. Gaze can be down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower the arms. Let's switch sides. Turn the right foot in. Remember your block. Turn the left foot out. Line up your arms and your feet. And maybe if you ever have to adjust, usually adjust from the back leg. Arms out to the sides. Inhale up. And then Trikonasana. So easy, not quite challenging, quite challenging when you start to hold these asanas. We're building strength in our bones here, holding the asana. So looking to your particular practice to see where you tend to, if you think about it energetically, where do you feel energetically that it's kind of, ugh. so if it's in, let's say, your left hip, it feels icky there, probably you're dumping down, look at below and above. So either your legs aren't engaged enough, so engage more, Draw the low legs in, inner thighs apart, or you're dumping in the upper body. So you lift up out of your hips. Use your abdominals. You can also maybe, it's that you're not scooping that left hip under, engaging the glutes. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower the arms down, and let's come to Tadasana. Join the legs together or bring them underneath hip bones. Shoulders back. Find that center. Draw into it. 
Take your hands together, Anjali Mudra. Connect your thumbs with your heart. Your fingers are spread, and you're locking back into those intentions that you had at the beginning of practice. So one more standing asana here for right this second. Take your legs wide. I like to keep my options open. So turn, lift your left toe, ball of foot, turn it in. Right foot turns out 90 degrees. So the hips are pointing this way, obviously, but they're not square. They cannot be square. See, legs not symmetrical. They're asymmetrical, and so the, therefore, so are the hips. Inhale, arms out to the sides. Warrior two. So your head is turned towards the right. Before you even bend the knees, the legs are firm. Lower legs, again, they're pulling into the midline. Inner knees, inner thighs, back and apart. Pull up on the pelvic floor. Tailbone is anchoring down into earth. Bend the right knee. Look to where you're going. That's your direction. Your gazing firmly in it. The eyes parallel with the horizon here. Now that the knee is bent, you can really notice if your knee starts to veer inward, that's really not good for the knee. So you're externally rotating this leg, and then you're getting it bent to 90. Might not be 90 today. The other funny thing that happens is we kind of collapse forward. Ever do this, and then this shoulder goes wonky. Oh, that hurts, don't do that. So what you do is sometimes taking a deep inhale instead of all the words will help. Also lifting here up through the waistline, turning the rib cage from right to left. So you're right in the center. This is your present moment. You're not trying, you're not trying to lean towards either one, the past, getting stuck there, leaning towards the future. You're right in the center. And I'm talking a lot so you won't notice that we're holding this for a long time. Lower the arms down, switch sides. Right foot turns in, left foot turns out. Bend the left knee 90 degrees. Oh, so yes. In my regular practice, what I'm doing is holding each of these a minute. And so you get to, too, isn't it fun to do it with someone rather than just by yourself? But you're with yourself, so you and your practice, that's a relationship between you and your practice. That's three people, well, three I don't know if it counts as a person, a relationship. The power of three, you, your practice, the relationship between you and your practice. Stand tall in the middle of it. This is a reminder, Virvadrasana 2, you are a warrior. This is not the relaxed yoga part. This is you are fierce coming up from the floor, set, announcing your presence. I am here. Straighten the leg, lower the arms, turn the left foot in. Hadasana. Oh, powerful. So now is where you have this divergent option to come into child's pose. Or sun salutation, A series, your choice. Come to the front of your mat. You can come this way, come that way. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, bow. Flowing with your breath. Now you might not have gone this deep into the hamstrings, so explore. Are your feet helping you? Are your legs helping you? Or are they in the way? Use what you've got. Draw those feet. Outer legs in. You can put your hands right here to the outer shins. Push in. Now push the inner thighs and the knees apart from each other. Wind through the sitting bones and lengthen the tailbone right up into that space. 
Low belly lifts off the thighs and maybe you can go deeper. Now let's go up halfway. Lengthen up through the spine. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, plank. Hold here, so we're going nice and slow. We're at the beginning of our journey. Push the floor away, be strong, be powerful. Chaturanga, weight shifts forward, elbows bent, 90 degrees. Exhale, lower, uncurl the toes. Use your legs the same way we've been doing, focusing more maybe on this practice on what the legs are doing. Press all 10 toenails into the earth. Take the pubic bone forward and up towards your heart, and then inhale, cobra hold. So if you get stuck in your low back, that means you need to back off and explore, okay, what am I doing? that's causing that, and do something different. You don't hold and hope that it's going to go away, because it'll just, if you're trying to fight with your body, your body will always win. So work with it. And exhale, lower. Tucking your toes. Lift up and back, downward facing dog. This is where you rest. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort, but it's a pause. Look in between your hands. You can always jump your feet forward or walk. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, hands in front of your heart. Release your arms down by your side. Standing on one leg, balancing. If you need to grab a piece of furniture or a chair, grab that. If you need to grab a strap, you might want to grab a strap to wrap around your foot because we're going into Ekapada, Ekahastapada Gustasana, which is one hand grabs the foot in a balance, asana. So if you have a strap, you make a little loop and you can wrap it around the ball of your foot. Or you can take your first two fingers and grab your big toe. So it's going to be your choice how you want to do this. But you're standing nice and tall. Bend the knee. Hold. And then you're lifting up through the spine and stretching the leg out in front of you, but you're staring at something out in front of you that's not moving. What you want to focus on now is, of course, your foundation, that leg from the tailbone pushing down and anchoring into earth. Top of thigh moves back into the hip socket. Left arm where you want it. Feel the hamstrings start to stretch. Feel the fire building in your standing leg. Use your abdominals. Release the leg. Take a pause. And 
and then you're going to go to the left side. So on this side, I'll just show you strap. Grab the big toe instead if you like. So from the side, there's a tendency to dump down into the hips, and what that looks like is that pushes the femur bone forward, see? And it starts to crank your low back. But you don't have to use your abs, isn't that great? You want to engage your abs instead. Lift on the pelvic floor, and then stretch your leg out in front of you when you're ready. So you've got those two strong, powerful hips of yours, and you're using them. Drawing them in towards the midline, drawing the tailbone forward, but the pubic bone is coming backward. All four actions working in unison. It's not the biggest movement in the world, but it lifts the pelvic floor up. And wherever you are, this arm is that's holding whatever it's holding is straight so that you don't have to overwork your bicep. Let this bit side be different because it is. This is going to inform you as we go through to more intense asanas, you're noticing patterns in your body, honoring that, and working with it. Release. Stand in Tadasana again. Always coming back to that center. So we're throwing ourselves off center on purpose so that we find a stronger sense of balance. We can balance on two legs. We can balance on one leg. We can, well, I can't balance on my big toe, but somebody can. You can balance on your index finger. One more standing asana, and that's it. So, Galavasana legs. So you can do this. I'll show you a few ways to do it. Okay. Hard way, number one. So I'm trying to figure out how to, I'll just face you. So Galavasana legs is where you basically you've crossed your leg in a figure four. So put a bend in your knees, cross right ankle over left thigh. So just starting here, okay, that's step number one. Step number two, hands behind this leg, and you lift it up. Now you might not be ready for number three. Don't worry. You've got time. We'll come back to it. Cradling the leg. Like so. Hang out wherever you are. You can grab a chair. So you would cross. You can also use a strap. Okay. All right. You can use your strap around the foot, pull it up, cross. So pretty much wherever you're at, there's a way to do this. And then you can focus on externally rotating this leg, squeezing the glute, opening like so. You can bow forwards, you can play with lifting the leg a little bit. So wherever you're at is wherever you're at. You're getting the work of the glute and you're opening the hips. I think you can feel it. And then Release, other side. 
So first with the cross, you could stay here because this is a huge opener already, right? You bend the knees, then you find that you don't have balance and you focus on the balance. So the trick is when you're doing this, keeping this pelvis from lifting, jumping to one side, keep it even as possible. Legs are asymmetrical, so it's not going to be symmetrical. Number two, whoops, don't let your foot turn out like that, like I just did. Go there, here, go. Takes a lot of ab work. Standing up, pushing out through the ball of your left big toe. Now, standing in Tadasana, feel if your hips feel a little more open, if they feel a little cranky. Next time, go a little less far. And then stand here. Enjoy. Where do you feel like more enlivened, like ready to go on to your next adventure? Thank you so much for joining me on part one. And I look forward to seeing you in video number two and three. Namaste.